Hi everyone and welcome to the channel and today we're looking at the Curves Workbench and the tool called the Curve Stand. And this is available from the Curves Curve Stand and also from the toolbar here. And this allows you to select an edge, part of a sketch and extend that geometry from either side. So let's have a look how it works by coming over to the sketcher and just drawing something in here and then we'll get into some basic examples. So I'm going to create a sketch along the XY plane, any plane you want and we'll create a few curves in here. So we're gonna go for endpoint or endpoint, and we'll create a curve here. Let's place some lines in here as well. Let's close that. And also let's come over to the part workbench and create something in here, say a cone. So we've got a number of geometries in here. Let's come back to the curves workbench and understand how to use this. So to use it, we select the edge and come up to the tool, Curve Ascend. What you'll see is that the sketch has disappeared and it's taken that single curve out of here. Don't worry, we can come back in and bring the sketch back by pressing the spacebar and say, click on this straight line and use the extend curve and use that as well. So we're sharing the sketch between those. So let's see what's happened here. So we've got taken this curve, if I look at the data, we haven't got much in here. It's quite a simple tool. When I first started using this, I didn't really know what to use it for. So the extend curve, we have a length at the beginning and a length at the end. So we've got these two here. Let's bring this out so we can see it. So this controls the length for at the beginning and end of the curve. So at the moment, this is 10. If we reduce this to one, you'll see part of this curve will pull inwards. So it's pulled inwards from this side and the same with the length end as well. So one, it will pull inwards. So you can see that. So we're extending out the curve from its origin. So if we look at the extend curve again and pull this right that way out. So let's say it's 20 all the way out. You may see a little bit of refresh problems there. That's because we've just selected it before and it's showing that edge and the edge has changed. But when we click off, it's absolutely fine. So it's gone out from the original curve. If I come back in and show that sketch, we can see that original curve in there and it's just followed the trajectory of that curve with a straight trajectory. That's important because when we come back in, you can see we've got the type start and type end. And we can change these to G2 curve and the same for this side. And you'll see, once I click off, how these curve round. We've got the same for this sketch here, this a stand curve. And if we come out, say 20 on this side and 10 on the other, you can see we've got those there. If we click on that and look at this type start and set this to G2 curve, then it's not going to matter because it's straight. Let's have a look at the cone. So we have this cone here and I've got a number of edges, so I can select edges, select this edge, and we'll use the extend. To extend it out from that edge of that cone, I bring the cone back, let's extend to curve two. We can see what's happened there. Let's take the circle and use the extend as well. So you see what's happened there, it's taken this and extended it right the way out, like so. And again, we've got the type start the straight G2 and you can see we can curve those inwards and also length ends as well so 100 and 20 click off and we can see what's happened there what's the application for these where can they be used here's one application a screw top container now I've created this in a compound workflow so where I've used the extend curve bring the extend curve back I've used it in with the helix. So we've got a helix in here. Let's just hide these so we can see them. So the helix itself, hide the extend curve, is just over a turn, one turn of a helix. The extend curve extends it out from the edges this way. Now, if we look at this from the top, we can see how those stand curves 
curve inwards like so. And this was important for my sweep because if I used a normal helix, you can see we've got no extension going inwards, which meant when I did the sweep, then it would actually be cut off here and it didn't create the necessary ends of the sweep that I wanted. So you can see how this curves inwards and this is all due to the extend curve. It curves right into this object and I can create a fusion on here to allow me to have a better lead in and lead out of this thread. So the helix creates the thread, which is the sweep and the extend curves allows the helix to come inwards because it uses the G2 curve. So you can see the G2 curve comes in. If I set this to straight, so G2 curve straight and the same on this side and click off, you see we come straight out like this. If this was a standard helix, this bit will be just sitting on this face and we've got no lead in or lead out. So this is for this side. Now the straight also was effective for the other side. So if you think of this helix, if I brought in the other side, let's just fix that a second. Change them back to G2. So you can see how it pulled that in into that shape there. Let's hide that fusion, the sweep and the helix and bring back the other fusion. So this is the lid, which inside has another sweep. So we've got a sweep in here. And you can see how this goes outwards. So this is a straight. So if I click on that and look at the extend curves for this sweep, it has a straight on there. So it's pushing this out. It's pushing out less as well by seven. So when I bring back the revolve, you can see how it embeds into those sides and gives us a nice lead into this thread. One thing to remember about this extend curve is that we have an output option as well. So I often use wire. I often find that the default, the single edge, we often get a problem with that when we're starting to sweep. Sometimes it will fail and other times it will churn away in the background for a length of time and take too long to apply. So I always use the wire. If we use single edge, the whole lot will be a single edge. If we use the wire, it will be converted to the wire and the extension parts will be an edge as well. So we have the main edge of the helix and the two extensions. So I've set this extension to say 19 on one side. You'll see the edge will be the same length for that extension. This is great when we're using sweeps and we want to sweep up to a point and then we may want to change some kind of profile for this edge as well. So we can join sweeps together just by using the extend curve and extending those sweeps out for the need of our application. So that's it for the extend curve. I'm going to look at doing this for all the tools in the Curves Workbench. And for the time being, I say goodbye and I hope to see you in the next video. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash paypal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone or at Coffee via ko-fi.com forward slash m-a-n-g-0. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos and I hope to see you again in the next one.